Podcast and Sunspot. Welcome to Paranormal Tuesday. Of course, I'm joined by my partner in music and crime, and I'm talking about Wendy Lynn. Yeah. Hello. All right. <laughs> and we are joined um, by the co-director and the producer of a very cool new paranormal documentary called The House in Between. And that's uh, Vera and Kendall Welpton. How are you guys doing today? Hey, good. what's up, Hello. guys? How are you All right. guys? Welcome. Fantastic, fantastic. Great. And so you guys are talking to us today all the way from... We're in South Carolina, right on the border of uh, North Carolina, Charlotte area. All right, fantastic. Lovely. And so we're coming from Madison, Wisconsin. If we haven't, if you're watching, we haven't met you before. Um, hi, we're into weird stuff, and we're going to talk to some, some fellow weirdos <laughs> like us. Is yes. what we're into. Um, number one, uh, I think everybody should get a little bit of background from you guys because you've both been in the paranormal world for a while. So can we hear uh, a little bit about your, um, well, your ghost busting credentials? <laughs> um, so yeah, I, let's see, for me, I was, uh, about 15 years ago, I answered a Craigslist ad to a ghost show gearing up fast. And uh, I answered the ad for a camera guy. Um, so I went in for the interview and got the job. And sure enough, it was Ghost Hunters on Sci-Fi Channel. Uh, I ended up starting with that show and going all the way to season 11 uh, on, on the show. And then uh, doing uh, the, the, second, uh, the second season of Ghost, uh, Ghost Hunters on, um, on the A&E channel. So uh, I've followed Ghost Hunters all the way through, and uh, I've done Ghost Hunters, uh, Ghost Brothers, uh, Ghost Hunters Academy. So uh, a lot of these ghost hunting shows, um, I've been a cameraman, director of photography on. And then, uh, yeah, director, uh, executive producer, director of photography on um, our movie, The House in Between. So that's, that's kind of my... Um, my ghost hunting experience, uh, 700, uh, haunted locations, high profile, everything from Alcatraz to, uh, Waverly Hills to, uh, um, tunnels, uh, just anywhere, uh, haunted, you know, that ghost hunters and some of these shows have gone. I've been there with the, the guys following them around. Yeah. And for me, um, well, the, uh, the paranormal topic has followed me sort of since childhood but it wasn't until my late 20s that I had a very profound paranormal experience that led me into this path of um, searching for more answers regarding this specific paranormal experience so uh, I stumbled upon the TV show Ghost Hunters and I saw a commercial casting call for Ghost Hunters Academy I applied at the first season I wasn't called but they called me the the, the following season and that's where I went and uh, Kendall was working there so we became co-workers. <laughs> That's how All we met. right. Yeah. Well, I mean, fall fall in love amongst the spooky is is great. But number one, well, uh, Vera, I, I want to hear about your paranormal experience that that brought you over to the the other side. Not necessarily the other side, maybe just the other side of all of us hanging out in the, <laughs> like the parapsychology <laughs> section of your Barnes and Noble. Yeah. Well, it wasn't anything, you know, extreme for me. I don't know what many people think will think about it, but for me it was. Uh, so sadly, so I was working as a nurse in a nursing home back in Washington State. It was my late 20s. I was um, going through a very difficult time in my life, and I don't know where sadly I heard the news that uh, my father had passed away. Uh, and then I started having a series of events that were strange. Uh, it wasn't just one time, it was several times, but I ignored it. I ignored it. I just um, just kept living life. And one day I couldn't ignore, I was in the middle of passing meds and I started um, smelling my dad's cologne, which oh. happened to be Paco Rabanne that he wore that he wouldn't wear anything else that was his cologne so i i was like okay that's weird and i thought oh, what are the chances that somebody here is wearing that it's gonna be torture i'm gonna be thinking of that and oh. you know i was really sad but uh, i couldn't find the source of that odor so then i thought me being a nurse and very analytical i'm very very rational sure. i thought great i'm i am you know 
it's a phantom smell. I'm I'm imagining this. I'm missing so much, and I ignored it. So anyway, day goes on. The odor was there on and off. He would come on and off, and then um, attack there asked me for help and, and it was the two of us on that wing of the nursing home and she said hey can you help me I need to get more towels I have this patient so I went and helped her um, watch this patient and this patient happened to be an elderly a female a female patient that um, was catatonic meaning she was very unresponsive never spoke never moved she was just on the later very later stage of her life and I don't know where she lifted up her head and she says your father is very handsome and then she looked to oh. my left and stared there and smiled. And I was just shaking at this point because I'm oh thinking, my gosh. I mean, it's all, all kinds of thoughts go to your head. And then she went that into her catatonic stage. And I was like, wait, wait, wait. I was trying to like get more for her oh. and I got nothing. Then my tech comes back and she sees me. And she's like, what is wrong with you? I was probably pale. I don't know. And I was like, I'm fine. And um, anyway, they go so on. I kind of ignored it too. I was like, I'm just tired. And I went home. You're like, you better not be hitting on my father in the afterlife there. <laughs> Listen, lady, I don't know you from Adam. <laughs> my mother would not be happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> she put years into this guy. Don't you think you're just yeah. showing up at all, <laughs> handsome? Sweethearts. <laughs> <laughs> so I go home and that night I found my son who had five years old at a time uh, sitting at the edge of the bed and I was like what's home baby what's wrong and he's looking just half asleep looking at the wall and, she, and she, he said um, mommy grandpa Lilo which is what we call them uh, says that it's okay don't cry anymore it's Aww. okay you should move to Texas and Texas is where my sister was living at a time is living still to this day so you know I was like okay was that my dad you know, and I, oh that's how it started. That's what was motivation wow. to go that's through. That's profound. Right, that story I mean, is awesome. Like, oh, most you. people's stories are like, oh, I heard a knock on my door. Nobody was there. That's crazy. <laughs> you had the, you know, you had the cologne. You had the, you know, your son uh, has a message for you. The catatonic patient comes out of a catatonic state and has uh, a message for you. All that stuff together. That, I... I love those kind of stories. Um, well, and it's a sweet one too. It's not a scary one, which is right. what people usually right. share with us. Right. So, so that's right. a very nice um, yeah. introduction yeah, a, to the, the world of the paranormal, right? That's an awesome story. All right. Well, uh, Kendall, you got to follow up. <laughs> now, did yeah. you have any experiences before you jumped on ghost hunters or anything like that? Was this something you were interested in? So when you're like, oh, I get to, use, you know, it wasn't just like, thank God I get to use my film degree, but it was like, I get to use my <laughs> film degree doing something awesome. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. I I jumped right into the paranormal, uh, you know, I, I jumped at the chance of uh, ghost show gearing up quick. But uh, before that, it was a lifelong, since I was a, a young kid, probably 10 years old, hearing stories from my family, uh, we'd all, you know, we'd all have these family get-togethers, and we always ended up telling ghost stories, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Grew up playing the Ouija board with my cousins. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, just, just always kind of interested into, uh, in, into ghosts and, and UFOs and in, in alien stuff, you know, but never really had any experiences until I, uh, I moved out of my, my house in New York. Uh, after I graduated high school, I moved to Colorado and, um, uh, my, my, my friend, uh, who moved to Colorado with me, we, um, we moved into this apartment in this small little town called fair play just outside of uh, south park county which is way up in the mountains it's like ten thousand feet um up in the it's just out in the but know, south park there. like in the oh my god you killed kenny right yeah yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. i moved to south park i i i mean that's where that's where they got the idea for the show i mean the the intro of the show is literally like the town next to where uh where i i lived which is uh alma and then uh it's fair play so i lived lived in uh yeah moved to this this little um building it was an apartment and and first night i moved in there i had this pretty interesting kind of scary experience with a, a wind blowing over my my face and my sleeping bag and and no windows or any doors open or mm -hmm. any air conditioning and uh so then i was like okay there's something strange going on here and uh i started asking about the uh the the asking around the town and some co-workers about the old uh building and they had 
told me that it was uh, actually a hospital. It was mm. the old hospital of the town. Uh, had everybody go through there from the neighboring town. So um, it was a pretty historic uh, building that they had converted over into apartments. Uh, then I found and that so and I you slept my, at, and they oh, gave yeah. you the morgue. Right, they well, were like, okay, so here's what happens. Yes, there's oh, a no. there's a really big like you love the freezer. It's huge, <laughs> but it might smell bad. You're <laughs> almost right on there. It was kind of crazy. No. We had the, we had the kitchen part of the the old hospital and part of the old like uh, it it was like thick lead walls. So I'm I'm guessing maybe X-ray photography or something. Your laundry but, room. But uh, but yeah, the the. The kitchen went down into the basement. There was a door that went to the basement through our through our apartment. And uh, I just exploring and doing my laundry down there. I always saw this strange big wood table just over in the corner. And it had gutters on it. And I was like, oh, I think I know what that is. <laughs> yeah. That must be the old mortician's table. And sure enough, uh, I start oh. looking around some more. And there's like oh. some some drainage uh you know drainage uh in the center oh of the of the, the 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 basement and then you know it was just set up for yeah probably Whoa. the morgue down there oh man so, it wasn't a makeshift to pool table like the gutters it wasn't just like we're gonna play some main ball with this yeah some some mountaineering pool table no i, I don't think so it was definitely it was definitely a very uh thick and well-made uh table um and, and I'm guessing to hold, you know, heavy, heavy stuff. So bodies like bodies, uh, right? Like dead dudes. Yeah. Like bodies. Yeah. Dead, dead people. So, uh, yeah. And then, you know, it, it, it didn't, re- there was a lot of occurrences in the, in the, in the apartment. Um, but, uh, everything from like noises to things messing with us with turning on the heat and lights and, and, um, uh, dishes being thrown in the in the sink and uh, I don't know just all kinds of strange strange occurrences. But it wasn't until uh, I decided to go and explore the upstairs with my cousin. Uh, my cousin came out to visit me and I had always told him about the place and and uh, we decided to go upstairs. Now we could make into the other apartment through ours through uh just a doorway that wasn't locked and we didn't know we thought we'd go exploring it was the um owner's weekend place so we thought we'd just explore up there and sure enough we uh start walking around and we get into this room that uh that opens up and there's all these old hospital beds and there was probably like i want to say like 10 to maybe 15 of them uh and it just kind of creeped us out a little too much oh yeah and my, oh, yeah my cousin and i bit. yeah yeah i mean they still got stuff in there from the old days so it, oh. it just didn't set right you know and also i'm kind of trespassing in in the, the <laughs> right you're not supposed <laughs> to so you're breaking yeah. in you want yeah, there's creepy yeah. hospital beds it, this is the scene where you get murdered i mean well, or is it breaking or the, in if you do, uh, it, yeah. Is it the meddling it? kid? You were you were the meddling kids. We were. Oh, oh my gosh, we were. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean is it breaking in if you got the open door that is to your apartment? I don't know, you know. Right. Oh no, I mean that's what Eve <laughs> said, right? She's like, Well the apple was just there. <laughs> the snake told me it was cool. <laughs> I mean, yeah, of course you're, you're young. You got to go see what's going on up there. So, uh, you know, uh, didn't get the good feeling. My cousin and I decided to go back downstairs and that's when we came back into, uh, my apartment and, uh, we both saw a picture that was nailed in with very, uh, very long, um, nails into the wall, four corners of the picture. And, uh, yeah, that ripped right off the wall. The two, the two, uh, bottom nails ripped right out, flew right at us. We felt the breeze come right through us. Uh, And that was, uh, you know, we, my cousin and I looked at each other and we're like, you saw that, right? Yeah, we saw that. And we, we left, we left, we went down to Breckenridge. You ran. Well, we did run. But <laughs> we left. We left in a very cool we manner. Yeah. We were don't like, it, "Don't try to make it sound dignified." <laughs> see, a, of, see a see a ghost. Ghost. See around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we ran the hell out of there. <laughs> so yeah, I Can't mean, say that I blame was, you. 
that was pretty profound. Uh, it was directed towards us, and yeah, we felt even the the pressure of it uh, come at us. So, you know, that I still with my you know after this, after doing what I've done for so long here, following these these uh, these guys, these investigators on these TV shows and stuff, I, I still can't explain it. You know, I've learned a lot through through my experiences in the paranormal, and I still think back to that day of when that happened and I just I can't wrap my my brain around a rational reason why that would rip out of the wall like that. Well well a, a reason that I like those stories so much is there were no cameras rolling. Like there's nothing <laughs> to prove to us. You know, I mean sure. as far as yeah. these are stories that happened to you when you weren't trying to get a great shot. When you weren't trying to make some magic happen. Like we're all, you know, this is in film, you're always like, okay, I'm really hoping we get this sweet shot. And obviously when you're working on a paranormal documentary, you're hoping the ghost jumps up and bites you in the ass. And so yeah. like it's those experiences when it's just you there that I think are, are always, you know, you're super powerful. Um, and especially because as the cameraman for a show like ghost hunters and all of those places like mm -hmm. you never see the cameraman you never see <laughs> the guy that's the thing it's like oh you say oh those guys must be really scared well that guy didn't have to set up the lights you know like you know jason right. didn't have to set up all the lights and grant didn't have he doesn't have to clean all the crap up if something scary happens and he runs out of the room somebody's got to follow him somebody's got to be behind well, somebody's got to be in the dark room to capture the guys walking into the dark room so yeah. <laughs> that's what i always think you... about like who's <laughs> the poor guy that's sitting there in the dark like okay come on in guys <laughs> yeah the cameraman goes first any, any uh... day now right yeah that's... yeah so yeah, I, I can we're... imagine you probably have enough stories to write a book just based on your experiences with that <laughs> I, I do yeah i mean a lot of experiences over the years too many to to really say, okay, well, I, you know, I don't believe because, you know, now I do because of all my personal experiences over the years. So, um, yeah, I mean, just it's been, you know, that's why I love, I love uh, the paranormal. It's, it's fun. You got a lot of, you got a lot of adrenaline pumping through you when you, when stuff's happening and, and you're exploring and, and you're, you're, you're looking for answers. It's just, it's what a, what a fun thing to document and, and, and really tell the story. Absolutely. You know, um, so you have to do this all the time already. Like this is part of your day job is going out and following these dudes around um, all over the country, wherever the, wherever the sci-fi channel or wherever the A&E channel sends you, right? Sci-fi, S-Y-F-Y. I wouldn't take any orders from anybody named S-Y-F-Y, but I just mean. Um, <laughs> nice. You no, know, but the... Um, so you have to do that. And so then what inspires the fact that, okay, this is no like a labor of love, obviously, something that you guys are excited about, want to work on together. What inspires you to want to go in there and take, you know, for an hour and a half film and a documentary? You shot this in 2018. You can see that, everybody. It's not a mystery because they got the timestamps on a lot of the cameras. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But, you know, you shot this two years ago. You spend a you know, year, obviously, editing it, probably going through hours of footage, hundreds of hours, and then comes out this year. Um, you know, what inspires you to want to take on a project like that when you're already living that kind of paranormal stuff um, you know, for the regular job. Yeah, that's a that's a great question because um, this one was different. Uh, it wasn't about um, you know personal experiences or going in there and trying to trying to uh, prove if there was you know uh, existence of of something supernatural happening. Uh, this was more about um, the story and uh, you know the the story of Alice Jackson and her and her haunted home. Uh, you know, and the investigators that were trying to get her answers for a decade long. So, like, that was what really got us wanting to get into uh, doing this documentary for the, for the amount of time that we did, and also the documentary in itself, because um, this is this is my first crack at at a uh, full documentary. I've shot tons of documentary style TV, and uh, and this is my first real full crack at at uh 
having having a documentary that uh, you know Steve and I can can go and and do you know anything really that we want to do stylistically and we don't have the formats of of anything holding us back and well let's and rewind for let's rewind for a yeah. sec for everybody um and if they haven't uh caught exactly what we're talking about it is the film the house in between and it is a full length documentary like paranormal investigation into Alice Jackson's house in this small town in Mississippi, right? Mississippi, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, and Florence, so, Mississippi. And so they go in and, and do that. And um, it's, it's number one, you said your first crack at a documentary. I appreciate the fact that you didn't put any of the, like the bullshit editing and stuff like, you know, it's <laughs> it looks like a movie. You're watching Thanks, it and you're man. like, oh, thank, thank God. You. And yeah. there's nothing like, oh, you'll, you can't wait to hold on for two minutes while we get mm-hmm. past this commercial and you'll see a shadow figure. Like it was <laughs> like watching it, you get, you, you, it, it, as stuff happens, you're seeing it. Um, it feels like you're watching a film, not watching a reality TV show. Yeah. And so that is refreshing. Um, how did you, you know, so, so just, I want everybody to know the story, the movie's The House in Between. It's a story of Alice Jackson and this, this build, this house that she built in the early 90s. Mm-hmm. And she it got to a point where paranormal activity happened and she wouldn't even spend a night in the house. She didn't sleep in the house anymore. But she doesn't want to sell it because she thinks something important is, there's a reason she has it. And so she won't yeah. sell it, and she in- invites paranormal investigators. How did you guys find out about it so that you could be like, well, we should, you know, how did you make that decision? Like, this is where we're going to take our first crack. Um, I'm going to drag my wife along, and we're going to work together, <laughs> which which sounds very difficult. Um, it, it was. It was. <laughs> we, 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 we created... Uh, our company, which is Robot Ninja Media first, and we were working on that. We were actually uh, planning on doing branded content. We were working on a project at a time for somebody's binge or company. Uh, we were doing um, different projects, and then he got a call. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got the call from uh, Steve Gonzalez, who is a paranormal investigator on uh, the show Ghost Hunters and now Ghost Nation. Uh, yeah, he uh, he gave me a call. He had um, been out to this house in Mississippi um, that that he he had an experience at, and I remember when he told me he had this uh, this experience at this house. I I scratched my head and was like, man, I've followed Steve and known Steve for a long time, and you know he doesn't have too many experiences. So this is something that um, that we gotta like kind of take serious here and you know we we got a meeting with uh alice jackson the the homeowner and she had gone over her her experiences and the story and and then uh and then brad cooney and john bullard we talked to them and then we saw their their evidence that they had um taken over 10 years a decade of of uh paranormal um happenings in the home and uh documentation of everything from uh dvr footage to uh audio to cell phone footage mm-hmm. to uh, uh what else it's um personal Something. personal experiences i mean it's been mm. it's been a decade long of of stuff happening in the house and those guys did a wonderful job at documenting it so and one it thing was, um i was yeah. gonna say one thing is um the bigger guy i can't remember his name right now he comes like he comes out and goes i was a um a boxing reporter for years he talks about he was he worked in yeah. boxing journalism yeah and yeah um he goes once i kind of was done with that uh, the paranormal is what caught my eye and I wanted to start doing investigations. And then I thought, okay, once we're done investigating the house, I want to know what this guy did for 30 years in boxing. Like well, I was, I did see, yeah. I did catch the, there's a picture of him on the wall with uh, AC Slater. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Mario Lopez. yeah, you did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was no, like, Brad. wait a minute. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, Brad Cooney. Yeah, he's like a legend in in the boxing world for reporting. Cool. He had a, like a website, and uh, he did a lot of interviews. He still does some stuff and is connected to those guys. Um, yeah, he he his his story is interesting. I, I just I loved his story. I mean, we we really wanted to tell his story beautifully, and I feel like I feel like we were able to kind of 
get into to Brad's life a little bit because it's you know it's just different than somebody that has a paranormal experience and gets into the paranormal. You know, Brad uh, saw Alice. Alice went on the news uh, with her house. Uh, and did an investigation uh, and had some journalists come in and she's, you know, Alice has been looking for answers of her home for a while. And, and so Brad saw that news piece on her, on her home from his, his house. And he's like, man, that's right down the road. I should go over there. I'm kind of interested. And then sure enough, Brad goes to the house, Alice, uh, you know, arranges to, to have him go in and sure enough, his first, walking in the house he has an experience there so he said he was hooked after that yeah wow, I, I, when, that's amazing when i saw like his den or whatever like his you know yeah. his, you know his man cave i was man like cave, yeah. that's a yeah. sweet man cave like with all the boxing stuff and then all the paranormal <laughs> stuff i'm like all right this guy's got an interesting history so that made it cool too because it you didn't just step on the local investigators which um would be easy to do because you want to be like, hey, let's get the dude from Ghost Hunters in here because that's what you paid for, everybody. You know, it was a, um, it was like, let's bring everybody in and show what these guys have been doing for a long time, and let's see what we can bring in, like from you, like you said, you know, seven hundred different locations and stuff like mm-hmm. that all over yeah. the country, like, and probably all over the world because international. <laughs> Um, (laughs) so, you know, but that, you know, it's that kind of thing where you you can come in and say like, I I I just thought that was very cool, um, to make sure that everybody was represented and that it, it felt like a team effort instead of like when the, like when the movies, when the FBI comes in and tells like the local cops, like, no, you can go (laughs) back and eat some donuts now. (laughs) <laughs> no no you're right i mean going into uh going into the whole the whole process of the fil- of filmmaking for this this documentary it it was scary at first because you know we don't know brad and john and alice and you know uh it, we don't know if they're trying to get attention from you know steve's pretty high profile uh and you know we don't know much about them and going in you know we Steve and I did the walk around and, and, you know, we checked the place out to make sure they're not playing, pulling any funny business. You know, Steve's got his credibility on the line. I got my credibility on the line. So um, early on, Steve and I really discussed telling the story of what is happening at the house. So if there was some funny business going on, we we're going to tell that story. If, you know, whatever the, the story was going to be told, we were going to tell it in 100% authenticity and real so that was that was our whole goal going in and and it was it was fun to see and do because it it was just different than than anything i've done in the past as far as uh as as far as documenting stuff and it was like in a linear style fashion where um one event led to the next and really it was just interesting to see how each event was leading us down this line of clues that was challenging to tell that story. Well, but, how did you um, approach yeah. it? How did you approach it differently than you would usually approach what we? I mean, because we're used to seeing the same thing every week on TV, and um, mm-hmm. you know, I, uh, I mean, obviously, we've got uh, Wendy and I have a, a like a, a Holzer Files drinking game. I think we did awesome. a Ghost Nation drinking game. We yeah. did the Ghost Brothers. Uh, we've had them on awesome. the show, oh, and yeah. we've um, oh yeah, and nice. then we have done shots with the Ghost Brothers. So, but the thing is, oh, so we we didn't need to do a drinking game okay. because we got to do it live. But the yeah. um, <laughs> you know, how did the when you came into the situation? Number one, you got two guys who put a decade into work on there, and mm-hmm. that's uh, unbelievable. Right, and those guys are awesome, and and you're putting one the, location, right? And they, you know, Sorry, they really guys. knew the place. <laughs> And so you can take their work and build on it instead of starting from mm-hmm. scratch. But how did you approach doing this so that it would be something different than what people get in 42 minutes of, I mean, 42 minutes with, you know, one uh, 30 second, you know, teasers and stuff like that. Uh-huh. In there too. Yeah. So, you know, when you were approaching the investigation and approaching how mm-hmm. you guys were going to film it, how did you say, like, I'm going to do this differently than uh, what we usually do on TV? Does it count that uh, he has a very stubborn producer? 
That, <laughs> that's the greatest thing, right? <laughs> somebody <laughs> call <laughs> somebody calling the shots. Who cares? Right? It Not a corporate difficult. suit. I, I had yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to Kendall because it was very difficult after filming for so many years a specific format and me I used to be audience I mean I was a paranormal fan and I, I just plain told them I'm going to challenge you and let, to break mm -hmm. the mold and tell the story differently and uh, that's how it all you know we spent hours so many you know nights together trying to do that and uh, we, focusing we, on uh, Alice, our, our point mm -hmm. was to focus on Alice and her story. And we wanted to give that um, perspective because we talked about it on most shows. The client is kind of, yeah, this is my story. Okay, you're done by. And um, I, as audience, I always wanted to know more, you mm -hmm. know, because and then with Alice, it was no brainer. I, I, I was a nurse when I had my experience. She's she's a nurse. I immediately bonded with her and I wanted story to be told well yeah we going in you know as vera said you know we worked very hard on doing things different than than what you've seen in the past and luckily you know i had so many years under my belt to see how how that was done and you know jump scares were were one of them was what mm -hmm. you're saying earlier you know that was one of our goals is hey <laughs> let's let's take jump scare yeah <laughs> let's take the jump scare out of there you know we did do one we threw it in at the you know at yeah. the very end oh, yeah. just for for poking fun at at us it was kind of fun for us yeah. but you know it, that it, was it, great. yeah it's just like there's you know we wanted to do away with the jump scares we wanted to do away with the you know the, the typical uh haunting edits you know and and uh and and we were able to establish that um you know by having a really great editor uh very i was about to say yeah. i had to give credit to Corey because he was great and um and a skeptic and a which skeptic, was, which was he awesome hard, yeah. it was challenging for him as well you know some of the things they were telling him he kept looking at like Oh, you want me to do what? <laughs> well, the editor got the raw footage, though. Like, so he's got to yes. sit there and you got to be sitting there like, oh please. My God. Right. For a paranormal investigation editing, you're like, please, God, do not charge me by the hour. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but, there's a lot of yeah people that don't paranormal investigate. There's a lot of time that is nothing is happening. So is. Right. Yeah. It, it really like a paranormal investigation seems sometimes it feels like it's a, it's a meditation in its own right because you spend a lot of time yeah. alone <laughs> sitting there and you, yeah. if you are not comfortable with being alone with yourself yeah. paranormal investigation is not you know you're <laughs> like yeah maybe the demons won't make you face something dark but sitting in a like a twilight lit room for 4 hours sure will right um, and trying to be quiet and not like movement on the uh, audio recordings and whatnot. <laughs> right. It's like, this is like a, a challenge to my, it, you know, mental it, state almost. It, it's challenging for <laughs> it's me true. not to fart on the EVP. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Especially after yeah. lunch. I mean, you have, right. you know, what, take, <laughs> oh, take out. Because, you know, <laughs> we have a, we have a rule where we call it out, you know, Hey, that was me. So it sucks when you, <laughs> you know, you fart. <laughs> right, and exactly. like, hey, that was me. Sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, but going into it though, so okay, so you guys made some decisions early and you wanted to focus on Alice. And yes. what particularly about Alice did you find, like when you got there, did you find that she was um, what you expected, different than what you expected? Um, you know, you've dealt with a lot of clients probably having mm -hmm. to talk with, you know, whoever's living in a bunch of houses and some people are going to be less credible than others so that I don't say Looney Tunes, but some people are going to be less credible than others. And so when you got there, um, what was your first impression? Were you like, okay, we made a great decision. Um, were you like, we're going to, this is someone I trust and I'm glad we're here. Um, like how was, how was Alice different than other clients? And then when you came to the story, so for for us, um, pre-production was about three months. I want to say maybe maybe longer. So talking to Alice, lining things up, we we were able to get you know we did a lot of talking on the phone. So we established a relationship on the phone, you know. But once we got to the house, uh, I mean, it just it felt like family, really. Like she just she I, the second she opened up her door, it was like we gave we we hugged, 
for, you know, and I've, I don't think I've ever hugged a client, <laughs> you know? And it was like, it's like the, the house is yours. And I just, you know, it's like, wow. she just, she, I mean, just open arms, uh, every day she, she, had so what's in the fridge, Alice? And, yeah, I mean, she literally had stuff stocked in the fridge for us. I mean, it was just Aww. she's she's so hospital. Oh, I mean, nice. the nicest Southerners. woman you could ever meet. I don't meet. know. There's something about it, the Southerners. Yeah, I, I, just Alice. Uh, it it made it a lot easier too, and especially, you know, getting to know Alice and getting her story. Um, it, it helped having that kind of uh, relationship right off the bat. Um, you know, instead of feeling like you're, you're scared about talking to somebody that's producing, uh, on a, on a, on a production, it's more of like, I'm talking to a friend right now and, and just opening up about her story and just, uh, and, and just getting the authenticity of it, you know? So, you know, watching the film, um, it's, so it's well done. The story's good. Um, how did you decide on the psychic to bring in? So this is something that sticks with a lot of different paranormal investigations. Mm -hmm. So you have the part where you bring in um, the equipment. You bring in the people who are experts in the equipment. Mm -hmm. And then there are a lot of investigations get to the point where you're like, okay, let's see if somebody that claims they're a psychic um, can pick up anything here and let's see if we can match up their feelings with mm -hmm. something that we find. Um, and they, and they go in it blind, not knowing anything about the circumstances. Right. So you're hoping to just, just see what they pick up on purely from their psychic energy or whatever. And so right. I, I was wondering about how you picked a psychic and if you used any particular kind of controls um, mm -hmm. when you guys were doing the research and, and the investigation, any tips for those of us who go on investigations and sometimes a psychic shows up and they're like, oh, it's the girl in the corner. And you're like, <laughs> okay, well, I don't, you know, so any, you know, so how did you pick it and any controls that you used to make sure that you got the maximum impact out of the research? <laughs> yeah. I mean, great question. Uh, so, Early on, when we were doing the pre-production of this, uh, we had talked about getting some uh, some experts in, and uh, and some of the experts were professionals, maybe an electrician, maybe I don't want to spoil the film, but we we got we got some uh, experts in there, and you know um, we hit every angle with the film. We we really wanted to go down the road of of getting every perspective or every possibility, and just kind of take a look at it and psychic mediums are part of our of investigations and alice had had um a psychic in the house at one point before off camera and so uh for us we wanted to to kind of maybe see if there was some kind of correlation between you know one psychic mm. picking up the same thing maybe there's two psychics that pick up on the same thing so for us we had massage the idea now steve i had to kind of convince him a little bit he's he's not big on getting psychics in but i knew a really good one uh joe morris who uh vera and i had met through her her podcast uh many years ago um uh the vera normal podcast and uh so we knew jill through the years and and we've always kind of kept in touch and uh in this psychic in particular uh never charge for readings and she actually worked with law enforcement quite a bit so so as a uh, producer you know, vera you're like that's my kind of budget <laughs> right. i never charge for readings all right well okay we'll get a we're gonna fly you're hired. we're we're gonna fly her out on spirit and she can stay at the econo lodge <laughs> oh, oh my god oh no no i mean we, we i feel bad we tortured jill we we literally well, like, it was important because the plan, the con the part of the, the control, the control part is, is that we didn't want nobody to know that that case, and uh, we knew a lot of psychics had been there already, so we didn't want to use any of them. So, and all we knew was her. But who do you go and call that that doesn't know, that doesn't know anything, that would be okay with putting them on a plane and going to an unknown location? I mean, it sounds crazy. Yeah. I don't think that anybody would have said. Thank yes. God we we knew her because yeah, we literally 
told her, hey, you're going to fly into Jackson, <laughs> Mississippi, because she would know because of her ticket. But, I mean, the house is outside of Jackson, so it could be anywhere on the radius of Jackson. Mm-hmm. And that was it. I mean, that was it. We, we put her on the plane. Uh, she came straight from the airport to the house. And what you guys saw the second she shows up in the car is we just were, you know, just that was the whole thing. Let's just let the letter get out, let the cameras roll and see what happens. And, you know, it, it doing it that way, like, you know, you can get in a, tr- you could like, they don't know how to be on camera. They could like, you know, just have lots of questions and start, you know, just like kind of sitting down and not, not working for the, you know for the film and it, it ended up working out jill did a really great and job i wasn't and, there for that one uh i watched the whole footage and it was long yeah i yeah. mean she put into a lot of time yeah. i mean of course we cannot possibly put everything in it but yeah. um i think she did a, a good she job did a great job it. yeah yeah and it was interesting to see what she came out with because and and that was the other thing i, I want to say this as far as the control too because that was something we were worried about is like re, like you said researching the the property before uh before they show up mm-hmm. because anybody can say hey um haunted locations near jacks right search it on the internet we had uh we had um alice and brad and john scrub all stuff about the house off the internet yeah, um right. all the mm-hmm. stuff on youtube and everything that kind of pertained to the house so nobody coming into the home mm. ha- could could research it beforehand and that was something we did early on um also we didn't want people showing up at the house so we didn't really uh tell many yeah. people where it's yeah. at and so mm-hmm. yeah we really wanted to to hit it with the best control that we possibly could and that was that was the best option for us to, and so I guess they're not always an option i mean it was yeah. something important that was important for alice yeah. In this yeah. Uh, process of trying mm-hmm. to find out answers, in uh, as well as as important as a scientist, as a yeah. physicist. Yeah. Is, yeah. 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 I mean, we like. Well, sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say that you know, obviously she's a a good friend who really trusts you guys, because she let you l- lead her into a. <laughs> I think she was Basically a, a blind. I, she was. Yeah. <laughs> I feel bad. We kind of tortured her, but I mean, den of vipers. Great. um but yeah i mean it you see it in the film like it's just it's so fascinating like that she went where she went and she was kind of directed towards these spots because it was very interesting and then you know she had these these visions before she came to the house and she sketched them and i I don't know like i just can't explain that you know we you can you can try to figure it out but I don't know, man. And so, I mean, she she sees some things that were suspected by the next door neighbor. Mm. Um, and I thought that was interesting. But then you guys go the next round. Instead of saying like, okay, the next door neighbor suspected that there might have been a burial on the site. And this is exactly what the psychic saw. You're like, okay, we're going to get a cadaver search team to come in and take a look. And the, I was excited about, I was like, cadaver search team. Okay. Let's yeah, say, I was excited about that too. You know, let's say you're a regular guy and you want to hire a cadaver search team. Is, <laughs> are they in the yellow pages? <laughs> like, where do you go to find I, that? <laughs> Kendall She's called magical. Me, like I said, I wasn't there. Kendall called me and told me like a summary of how the scene with Jill went and you know, all the unexpected. And I was like, Kendall, we have to find and search dog we have to find one yeah. it was 10 o'clock mm-hmm. it was 10 p.m yeah i think and it was he's 10, like 10 o'clock, we yeah. don't have time we literally had yeah. to film tomorrow we had two yeah. days left here like um we we can't and i was like let me try so i literally just google and i found two the first one didn't answer the second one answered and it was a gentleman and he was about to pretty much telling me no when i started <laughs> doing more convincing and then he He's like, hold on a second. Let me put so and so on the line. You're like, no, I think it. I think there's a ghost. We need the dog to find <laughs> a dead body, like a ghost of a dead body. And he's like, hell yeah, I'm getting out there. <laughs> no, they, they these people truly do um, 
uh, cases for yeah. um, for for homicides, for homicides. And, and sure. I mean, children. I mean, it's Mississippi. It's like winner's bone out there. So I can oh, imagine they Mississippi. They were yeah. in Louisiana. Or no, 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 they? no, up north. Oh, wow. they were yeah. Three hours away. They, they literally drove oh three hours. God. They literally got in the car the next the morning, next morning and, and, and came out. Yeah. And we told them, we're like... And you're like, there's the catering for the next three days, guys. Sorry, we had to pay for the dogs. We had you know, to pay for the dog they bones. Charge. They didn't charge. Work. We know. made a donation, I but like, yeah. uh, I have to... It's, um, dog search, South, search, search Dog, dog South. South. Yeah, uh, they were just awesome. Maybe you want to yeah. donate to them because they were yeah, amazing. They were amazing, yeah. I uh, will forever be grateful because yeah. I thought it was a very important part of the film. It was, yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. And, you know, just to get answers for Alice, even if something didn't show up in the in the search dogs it was like well alice you know here you go we got the search dogs out here uh this is what we found and and that was kind of the film all along was trying to get mm-hmm. alice back in her home now alice built her dream home it was her dream home that was built in the 90s and she moved out in 2011 because of a major paranormal experience what was that paranormal experience and what was causing it and that is that was the whole that was the whole mission there and, uh, you know, I think it it starts to be interesting um, when you start bringing in the scientists. And you didn't just bring in, like, one scientist, you brought in a bunch. And I appreciated that, too, because... Yeah, very much. Right, because it's like, okay, well, let's see. And, you know, was it a struggle to find scientists who are like, I'll talk on a paranormal, like this isn't going to be on, like, because number one, if they know you, they know they're not going to be re-edited by some networks, you know, like just to like, it's one sentence where they say, you know, they're talking about something, you know, like, well, reality, you know, reality TV, they can say everything. They find one sentence. The Franken bite. And they'll they'll put it into the narrative. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden you'll have a scientist saying like, I love ghosts. And so, (laughs) And right, and all this, he loses that, his actually, he loses yeah. his tenure, <laughs> yeah, uh, because of you guys. Uh-huh. So yeah. you know when you went into that, and this is what I appreciate because you're like, okay, let's see if anything could happen. These weird things moving around, could it be magnetic? Could it be you know energy? You go, you talk to a scientist about the stone tape theory, and limestone, mm-hmm. yeah, and you know if energy can be saved inside of rock, and mm-hmm. um. I always Steve found a guy. He he did a really good yes, job. Yes, kudos yeah. to Steve for uh, for the science section we, in the, the we film. We were in charge of Michael Dandon yeah. from California. Yeah, so, but and, that uh, that was very important. And you know, some of the stuff has never really been talked, talked about to much. scientists, yeah. or you know, and it was it was really interesting to get the scientists take on the evidence from uh, from Alice's yeah. home because uh, you know I don't know how many people have really taken evidence to somebody like, you know, like our scientists in the film. Uh, well, I mean, the was, stone tape a- theory, the stone tape theory is from like a British science fiction author in, the, in 1970, <laughs> like Nigel Keneally, who wrote uh, Quartermass. Yeah. And the thing is, we're all like, well, he was a British scientific author in the 19 or science fiction author in the 1960s. Obviously, he must have been of intelligence. And you're just like, what? He wasn't a scientist. He was a dude who was paid by the word. <laughs> yeah, you know, research in the film. It's funny we ran across the the film, the Stone Tape Theory, mm-hmm. and uh, we we mm. drank some wine and and watched <laughs> made it through the whole thing. <laughs> it was it was uh, definitely an interesting I movie. The whole in the thing. Uh, oh, I I actually enjoyed it. Yeah, it, it wasn't bad. But yeah, we I've we kind of we're like, man, I wonder if this is where the theory of of uh, you know. Uh, uh, Sorry, minerals yeah, being yeah, able yeah. to hold mm-hmm. uh, energy. So we thought, you know, Steve, Steve, kudos to Steve, man. He he tracked that down and and really wanted to kind of get I get a that. scientist's ear to mm-hmm. to to talk about some of the things that yeah. that have been uh, you know uh, hypotheses for so many years with the paranormal. Yeah, it was so kind of Dr. Guy to agree to be part of this because. I mean, we haven't mentioned that we got denied so many oh, yeah. interviews. We wanted yeah. a geologist as well for that reason mm-hmm. to cover the whole theory uh, and give us their expert opinion. And nobody wanted to talk to us in that like, area. Mm. Like you said, they probably were afraid of losing their tenure. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, so the only person I wish you would talk to and that I thought when I was watching, it, I was like, oh, we should discuss this was a seismologist. 
Ah. Was yeah. because mm -hmm. um, the movement in the house. Obviously, it looks great on camera because we're like watching it. We're like, obviously, you don't have the budget for like CGI moving shit around. Like, you know, it's this is real. And then you're thinking like, are these little quakes, are they fracking somewhere near Florence or something? Like, like yeah. what little things have come on? I'm like, I just yeah. like, like, where's the, like the last person I wanted Could to talk to? Could there be a sinkhole somewhere nearby <laughs> that's just starting to go or something? Yeah. Like, I don't know. That's a, that's or for a 20 years. Point. Yeah, I mean that's a very good point. We did we did some research on on that actual fracking if there's fracking in the area. Oh, you did. Uh, okay, we okay, found, awesome. We did, but we didn't we didn't talk about it in the film. We did a lot of stuff that we didn't talk about in the film because we really wanted experts to speak on camera yeah, about it. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, a geologist, we have like the uh, geology of the area and um and it was it was hard to to show that without a geologist exactly. talking I got about it. Thirty you know? times, yeah. Until I finally gave up, I was like, okay, <laughs> they're not gonna talk. And about also, that. we also wanted to stay true to Alice's story mm -hmm. as well because, um, you know, we, you, you have the rough cut of the film and it's very very long, and you know, it starts at some points, it starts to get, you know, it drags a little bit, and so, you know, some stuff takes away from the story. And, and, and what we ended up with was something that was perfectly balanced. It had a really great flow. And um, in the ending, I mean, we really wanted to to um, focus, you know, on on kind of leading you up to to that big ending that we had, because that was that was definitely a, a very <laughs> yeah, it was a very unexpected experience and and a very um, interesting experience, you know, and well, there's two. There's two things I think that happen in the movie that I was like, ooh. Like, one is the ending is good because it's more than just, um, this isn't a spoiler, but there's a ball that's moving around on its own and it happens a, a ton of, like, how many pieces, how many actual videos do you guys have of that ball falling down the stairs? Mm. Yeah, we oh. probably have... 15 I, maybe I didn't count. yeah we have more than we showed i mean, yeah. uh, I mean so, yeah, some yeah. of it's the same angle so it's like you would think it was the same shot <laughs> you know what i mean yeah just, yeah yeah <laughs> but uh but yeah i mean we yeah there's a lot of evidence that we didn't show in the house and the you know there's there's a lot of EVPs, really great EVPs, but we stayed away from the EVPs um you know that was something that steve uh really really wanted was to have 150 percent credible evidence you know really sure. good tangible evidence mm -hmm. so so what you saw in the film was the best of the best um mm -hmm. evidence that that made it through the the steve filter as we called it <laughs> which well, is nice good i mean little... you can't oh, yeah, yeah i mean he's he's got the experience if anybody's going to be able to like see something that that is like you know credible evidence it's going to be steve you know he's He's had so many years at looking at evidence and other people's footage and evidence. So, yeah, we, we really respected that. And that was a nice little gift on your way out that you had that bonus experience <laughs> as you were packing up, right? I mean, Almost it like was. like the house was like, thank you, good night. <laughs> That's what we said. That's what we said. We, we always talk about it. It's like, like the house is giving it to us. It was just yeah. like. And, and that's part of it, too. I mean, the investigators, uh, Brad and John, had said it for years, is that it's like interacting with them. It, it's it's learning from them. And, and like, you know, you got to be like, okay, well, that's, that's an interesting thing. Like, I guess if things are happening on command, then, you know, it I guess it is learning from you and it's listening. But, you know, it wasn't until, you, you know, packing up, like you said, that, that, um, he almost didn't make it because um, he was. She didn't want to be on camera. And yeah. She was like, "No, this is like, you know, I'm a little uh, nervous about this." <laughs> yeah. Reaction. Right. He's like, "I'm I mean, ready for my close-up, Mister." We're gonna. We're gonna. <laughs> well, we're gonna I guess around, especially yeah. like how I reacted to it. I mean, geez, like, no, it's a little embarrassing, I but pro I promise yeah. you. I mean, it, good. I promise it, you. And then we just decided to let's just run it all, raw. uncut, raw, mm -hmm. and just. Yeah, and Just, again, I mean, that's the event that happened. Yeah, yeah. Frost. yeah. It, it, that felt that. real, and so that that was great. Um, so that, I was gonna say there's, there's two parts that I was like, hmm. Um, number one was that one. Obviously, the ending's big, and so that's kind of it's exciting when you get there because you the whole thing. And the second one is 
when the REM pods go off at the same time. Yeah. Because I yeah. am, I'm Mr. REM pods are bullshit. Like I'm just yeah. like, oh yeah. yeah, what? Like I don't even know how yeah. this is made. Like, we, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's it's electricity, buddy, and, and you know what? The ghost can do the electricity. Sure, like what? Like it can. You have things set up in different points in the house, mm -hmm. and sure, one of them can go off. But when three of them go off at the same, like when he's like, "I would it be funny if all the red pods went off?" <laughs> And then they all go That's off. That's what he said. That I know. He said and, that, that, and then he goes. And then it's like, like okay. Like, it was like, like, oh my gosh. I, yeah. I don't think I've wow. ever seen that. That I've was the first time I cared about REM pods. Filming. I was yeah. like, you got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you completely, 100% on that. You're not a big fan of. I'm not a fan of REM pods either. I mean, it's, it's just, yeah, yeah, anything could set them off. You know, car keys, uh, uh, garage Walkie. door openers, walkies. Like, yeah. yeah so, you know. Sexual it, magnetism? It's like. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's a device that you really got to have a controlled environment. But, you know, when three of them go off all at once, that's something that you just can't make happen or you can't, that doesn't usually happen. I mean, one was in the back room, one was up on the stairs and one was over on the, um, the, the fireplace. fireplace. Mm -hmm. And, 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 you know, Brad, like you said, Brad says, Oh, it'd be great if they all went off and it's like, Oh, Hey Brad, it's you again. I'm going to do that for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> as, as you, as you requested. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you know, that, nobody, nobody has asked this question. I mean, my personal, one of my personal favorite part was the um, the fire alarm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know what do you think oh, about yeah. that far, like. Yeah, yeah that fire. was cool. It was it responded when you were talking about the uh, yeah the fire that had occurred in that city, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. For the audience, I can see why it wouldn't be. We were like, well, you know, those things do that. But for us. Yeah, my fire alarm went off at like 4 o'clock in the morning last week. <laughs> and like it all like went off at the same time and because the fire alarms are linked. Meant, right. Right. It meant that I had to also <laughs> like I not only did I wake up in the middle and I had to wash my sheets. And so it <laughs> just, it, you know, like that kind of thing. Um, I'm like, oh, yeah, you have a fake. If you get smoke in it, if you get fake, you know, like uh, dust can get in it. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Right. But also, that was four o'clock in the morning. That wasn't after somebody was just talking about a fire. Right. It was, right. It was a strange coincidence. It was, yeah, yeah. it was very. It was never happened again. And, I, and you know, I remember talking to Alice about the fire alarm afterwards and, and, uh, you know that that fire alarm is wired into the house, and that never happened before that or after. I mm -hmm. I've, I asked her a few months ago, "Hey, is that fire alarm gone off again?" No, you know. So, uh, wow. yeah, it's just it's it's kind of interesting that it, it chirped there on command when they were talking about the the fire yeah. alarm. Hey. <laughs> well, I mean, number one, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. We're having yeah. a great time talking to you. House in between. I want everybody to go check out the movie, um, because like if you wasted your money on Demon House, like Wendy and I did, uh, <laughs> this is much better. And um, that's not even a like that. You guys are like, oh, not come on. That's not even a comparison. Oh, thank you. Um, Thanks, man. oh my goodness! I appreciate I'll ask like Megan. So yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, no, I mean, <laughs> obviously, was, Zach, fun. Zach's yeah. good. At, Zach's good at entertaining people. But as far as paranormal investigation goes, yeah, um, this okay. is far beyond it. Um, awesome. Wow, and you. so let's. I, j I just want to give everybody a couple of comments, um, you know, f from our uh, from the people who are watching live right now. Um, yeah, yeah. Also, for anybody hanging out, uh, Patreon.com/slash Sunspot Music is where um, it's our Patreon community where we do like paranormal stuff like this every single week and write music about it. We pl that's how we I met actually it. Steve, uh, for the first time was at different awesome. paranormal conventions that we're the, we're usually the band, um, that <laughs> okay. plays oh. our, plays our awesome. dumb songs. The entertainment. <laughs> yeah. We're the dumb we're the, songs. I you listened to your music today. today. <laughs> awesome. I'm yeah. in love with one yeah. Thank song. You. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, very cool. um, so, so from the comments, uh, first of all, you're getting some uh, compliments. Eric, these two are a power team. Oh. They put all their blood 
and sweat and Aww. tears into this project. Aww. Aww. Okay, so Eric is awesome. Eric. Him and I have worked together for many, many years. And he came out and helped us for one of the shoots. Um, and he was part of the project. Eric was, uh, man, he was Superman on set, running around doing like 30 different jobs and uh, camera operating, camera AC, audio, like uh, tech, wow. like every. I mean, this was a this was a small, a, you know, a small production. Um, and, and we had some really, really great people part of this. And Eric is one of them. Yeah. Okay. We were lucky to have him. Sounds good. And uh, this seems like it was important to the investigation. Ask Kendall about the bacon oh. and sausage. Hey, <laughs> hey what's up, Brad? Awesome. Hey, Brad. Yeah, bacon and sausage. Uh, yeah, every day uh, Alice um, came and had bacon and sausage and like wow. cheeses and she had like a whole spread on her oh table for us before. I mean, it was just like. Uh, she, Dream investigation. She, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, Steve it was, was just, happy. It was it was awesome. Yeah, it was really cool. And then coffee, the coffee, Eileen. Oh my gosh, uh, yeah, Eileen made the best coffee uh, on on set there. And it was coffee guy. It was it was fun. I mean, nothing like, wrong like with I being said, a coffee snob. A good I'm, family. I used to I used to be like I'll drink anything, and now like I'd rather um, we get to a gas station. I'm like, you know what? I'll just I'll just drink out of the toilet. Um, <laughs> Four hour energy drink. <laughs> But that's Southern yeah. hospitality. Boy, they right. really, really yeah. I was going to say they said that's right. Yeah. Uh, George yeah. says, I could listen to these oh, beautiful up, people George? talk about banana bread. I don't. <laughs> oh. He might be talking about Wendy, but he's not talking about me. Uh, uh, so what do you think? Uh, what do you think George about banana bread? Oh, she what makes wonderful ba- banana bread. Oh, right. no, oh my mom is the yeah, queen banana. of banana bread. My mom is queen. some more. She's listening. I'm oh getting man! All this food talk. Oh, <laughs> right. Ooh, coffee and banana bread. Oh my God, it's so Aww. amazing. Brad yes. comes back in and he's Good like, combo. because he goes to and the tremors and stuff. I and the seismologist stuff. I was mm. interested in yeah. an earth tremor wouldn't only move one object; it would move move everything. Good that point. I mean, and the, the the what made me think about that was the chandelier. Good uh, point. When I was Brad. watching it, because yeah. when the chandelier moved, I'm like. Well, there is there is a, a little bit of a debate there though because if it was a very like minor vibration, mm-hmm. depending on what you know the position of the objects and where their center of gravity is, if it was a minor tremor, it would only move some items. You know, like the lighter type things. Just just throwing out there that it, uh, it no, still very, could very, be possible. No, I mean this is yeah, this you're is, right. It wouldn't move. Yeah, everything. I mean this is the <laughs> mindset you should have going into an investigation and when evi- you know when you get sure. evidence. You should think about these things. Thing. And, mm-hmm. and you know, that is a good point, Brad. Like, they have trigger objects sure. set up all through the house. And some were, like, less set than uh, the, the ah. ball. There was, like, four balls on the stairs. There were some teddy bears oh, in, the, okay. in the bedroom. So, you know, uh, there wasn't anything else besides the huh. ball when that happened to us in so the So you place. would expect and, the, other, the other items would have toppled that were lighter I, or more I would have yeah I now yeah. yeah that's a very good point um and then you know even down to the to the last uh piece of evidence you know that Brad found mm-hmm. um at the very end there uh you know we tried so hard to figure that out we you know I remember searching the wind speed of things and you know the, that's when I started looking at the seismology of uh the area um we thought about you know everything really how looked at records. I, oh, I did. Re- we, we, we did receive records of the last. I, I can remember the time frame, but the list of um, uh, earthquakes, mini yeah. earthquakes, into the the was around the area. Nothing. Nothing yeah. was recorded for the area. We we also like. I remember looking at the DVR footage too. I'm like, okay, well, let's see if there's any other events that happened in the house when that last thing happened. And I remember catching a glimpse of trees outside. And going, okay, well, you know, drone operator, I know how to judge the wind speed by looking at the trees if it's windy. So let's see if, you know, maybe this uh, paranormal activity happened from uh, a windy, a wind gust or sure. something. And ah. I, I looked at one of the cameras that were facing towards the window, saw the trees out there, nothing. So it really, it really uh, it made it past my filter anyway. And, you know, and then you're still- like, yes. No way. Hey, hey, how many were able to get excited? Yeah. You know, I, what I'm wondering, how many cameras did you guys have set up 
at one um, time? Like, what was the most, yeah. like, um, was there ever a point where you're like, there's no way we're going to be able to look at all these cameras? Like, you know, like, because the thing is, now yeah. with cameras, you can get them so cheap or you can get small HD yeah. cameras and everything. Yeah. Was there ever a point you're like, I... I'm going too far with these cameras here. Or like how, what was the number of cameras you had to set up at one time? Well, talking about footage, Vera and I went through like <laughs> all of it, really. I mean, uh, probably over a thousand hours of thousands wow. of hours of footage. Okay. I mean, it took the, the, it took a while to put this thing together. Oh and, my gosh. You know, luckily, luckily Brad checks the house every day. And, uh, wow. and if something's moved, that's some of those trigger objects, uh, you know, he'll check, um, the trigger object as well. So he, he's keyed us to, to some of the stuff, but yeah, I mean, we had to go back in and look at all the raw footage. Um, so yeah, let's see. Let's go the DVRs. Yeah. The DVRs, there's two DVRs. There's probably yes. four and a six, I think, or maybe they got six on one and four on the other. So, and then, uh, oh, when we're yeah, rolling, we have, GoPros. we have GoPro oh. like for the film, we use yeah. the, the red and then the GoPros and the a seven and then, uh, two GoPros. And then, uh, they had an investigation camera. So, Oh boy, oh boy! I just lost track. But maybe, um, maybe twelve to thirteen cameras uh, okay. rolling. Yeah, yeah. Mostly, uh, all the time is the DVR, and that's the thing yeah. that that catches a lot of the yeah. the footage. So. Sure. Uh, Jay Bloomkey says, Kendall and Vera, oh. what's your next project? Ooh. Oh Good man. Question. Jay, what's up, man? Hello. Jay's awesome. Worked with Jay. He was a uh, director on Ghost Hunters for many years, and uh, he's doing a lot of cool projects now in the paranormal. He's like a paranormal OG. Uh, yeah, yeah <laughs> awesome. He's awesome. Yeah, next project. Let's see here. Um, we are working on some stuff, uh, but we're don't feel comfortable talking about it yet because it's it's uh, it's still. It's still in the works. So, but cool. we will uh, go on to our website, um, robotninjamedia.com, and and uh, we'll be posting there Ready for. for oh, we'll, we'll let you guys know. Yeah, you guys we'll will know. Show yes, way. please yeah. do. Sounds good. Um, I would love to do another documentary in spite of the pain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're looking for another story, too. I mean, hey, you guys are still sitting here together. You guys are still <laughs> sitting <laughs> next to each other. Like, and you, I have not detected. I, you know, you might be good actors, but smart. there's, no. there's not no. like, there's I'm not like. So I'm so gonna. I am Aww. going to. Like, <laughs> as soon as you fall asleep, uh, that, I, I mean, we've been through so much together. Like, and, yeah, nothing's I'm gonna. Cutting yeah. you a little bit every night. Um, well, and the documentary, it's, it's kind of like childbirth, right? You forget oh. all, all of the other oh. bad parts. What? Like yeah. once, once it's done and it's born. <laughs> oh, There's a lot of sleepless nights. Vera, we took shifts. Vera, Vera wow. would take the one shift through the night, and then I'd get up early in the morning, and you know, and yeah, sleep during the day. Yeah, the the day. I mean, it was, oh, it was, yeah, it was major. I mean, we would, uh, we have kids, so we right. had to work around, you know, their their mm. schedules, and yeah, it was. Did it you was, stay in the house? I did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. um, Steve, Steve and I stayed there. I mean, we were up all night working, uh, you know, but sure. but I did stay there by myself uh, for a night, which was really fun. It didn't make the documentary, um, but uh, yeah, it was it was a cool experience staying there, staying there alone. Oh, amazing. You know, brave. You, you talked about the Steve filter. And I think this is my final question. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is that. So we see Steve on Ghost Hunter. We see Steve on mm -hmm. Ghost Nation and he's never. He never gets to be the lead, obviously, because, you know, they get you, the, the personalities between Grant and uh, Jason. They're very, you know, they're big personalities and they're talkers and stuff like that. And then he comes to the forefront here. Um, as somebody that's worked with all those guys, mm -hmm. what would you say is the difference between uh, Steve taking the lead and his filter and like what you were saying versus mm -hmm. uh, the other ghost hunters? Well, this one's different because Steve was uh, director on on this, so he wasn't in front of camera. And you know, the whole the whole project wasn't about putting Steve on camera. It was about Alice, and so the director role um, was was just a different uh, role that uh, Steve working relationship between Steve and I. Um, you know, usually he's he's in front of camera and investigating, and and uh, that actually helped 
uh, with the direction of the film, you know, um, his knowledge and his credibility and, and just some of the things that he probably wanted to do in the past with investigations, but maybe never had the time or resources. And we were able to do that here. So, okay. So no, I was just wondering about that. Like, cause you mentioned the filter. Um, Oh yeah. Yeah. The filter, the Steve filter is a real thing. I mean, it's, it's, it's very, it's very detailed and you know, uh, it's, well, it's simple. They have so much experience. They've been doing this for years mm-hmm. and years and years. So, you know, if you're going to send them a picture, oh, think, I, I think I have a ghost and it's a dust particle. It's orbs. Or, yeah. Yeah. No, it's yeah just, I mean, you know, that's what we mean by this. Yeah. Filter. yeah say, it's no, throw that away. That's, He's ahead of everybody. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, his knowledge is Mm -hmm. so far ahead of, of, you know, uh, any paranormal investigator. He's, you know, the OG of it. Yeah, he's seen it all. So so the Steve filter is a good thing for when you're you're wanting to do a very credible documentary and not poke light at, at, um, you know, things that, that might not be so much paranormal they might be more entertaining than others uh, sure when in doubt yeah when in doubt throw it out like that's their kind of motto and you know we use we use that that uh in in the documentary well we appreciate we appreciate that we appreciate the realism um faye i live next door we have been neighbors for years and my daughter erin has experienced many things in this house Hi! Oh, hey! Oh my gosh, awesome. hello, I mean, this is pretty awesome. Like, we're getting like this if I awesome. if I'd have known it was going to be a cast reunion, uh, we could have gotten more people on <laughs> yeah, Skype, it and all could have talked about it as like a DVD extra. Yeah. Um, so she is Alice's neighbor. Yeah. She lives next door to. So was she what, the woman that was in the documentary? No, her That's was her daughter. Aaron is. Yeah, yeah. that's her daughter. Right. Yes. Yes. yes, Aaron was and okay. And, well, she grew up there mm-hmm. uh, in and that. This is something that I was passionate about because I've always had that question throughout the years. And like, what about the neighbors? Why is just the house? Are the neighbors experiencing right. something? Whatever the next door, yeah. across the street, you know, like I, I always wanted yeah. to know. And I found it fascinating that indeed uh, the girl next door growing up had plenty of experiences regarding Alice's house since she, she was young yeah, so and she she, was she had girl. experiences inside the house with Alice yeah, as well together and and it's yeah like Vera said you never really hear from the neighbor which was really neat to mm-hmm. to see that right it was cool to cool. see because we've done investigations where the neighbor um is like I think they're crazy there's nothing <laughs> going on no there is like we, we've been we're like oh and when you like the neighbor's like, nope, haunted. Kids like, yep, dead bodies. You're just like, okay, like let's. There's something. <laughs> there's something going on in Florence, Mississippi. Um, and I'm, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm I mean, the, the woman across the street too. That she oh yeah, okay, yeah. I mean, you got you got both sides of the spectrum or the sides of the road. There, we got the the neighbors next to Alice that have experienced stuff, and then you have the neighbor across the way that. Um, really doesn't want anything to do with what's going on at Alice's house. Obviously, everybody in Florence has uh, heard about Alice's house and and you know her paranormal experiences and and you know that was a actual uh, actually another big goal of ours for the documentary. I think Alice was kind of looked down upon in the the town for maybe the crazy lady that owned the the owned the old haunted house, and that's not the case. And and uh, and it's you not know, haunted; it's interdimensional, Alice. So that. <laughs> The thing is, like everybody, they have, they have the wrong idea about it. You know, that's up for debate for sure because Wait, that, we that don't know where these that's ghosts true. come from. It's it, there's no science, there's no uh, technology that has proven where ghosts come from. So, hey, any nice. hypothesis is on the table. So, mm-hmm. and you guys, I mean, it was I thought it was cool when you went to the the Pascagoula. Like you went out there, yeah, and yeah. you talked to Calvin Parker. Um, and he has recently, like in the past couple years, come back to this whole, uh, alien abduction and like, he's got an OG alien abduction from 1971 that was like debunked by Philip class and everything like he, you know, so, uh, seeing him, I did not expect to see him in a ghost centered or, uh, you know, that kind of paranormal documentary. So that was interesting when you explored, okay, this might not be unhaunting. 
is it something different? Is it interdimensional? Yep. Is it extraterrestrial? And going into that, I thought was cool. How how far down the rabbit hole did you go there? <laughs> um, you know, we had to we had to take every uh, we had to look at every possibility for the documentary because Alice experienced something that Steve and I hadn't really heard in the past uh, as far as as um, experiences with with lights in a in a haunted location and these lights were more of an experience towards an extraterrestrial or a some some kind of some kind of worldly or uh, dimensional uh, experience that we've kind of stu studied about. Uh, so we had to look at that as a possibility and talk to people about it. And Calvin Parker was, I think, three hours away from Alice's home. And, you know, by spaceship, it's probably, you know, f two seconds. So we had, to look, <laughs> we had to look at that as a possibility hey. of, of what Alice is experiencing and get his story. Um, you know, uh, it, it just... This, the lights that happened to Alice and, and Alice, you know, believes that it could be extraterrestrial. So we had to we had to really look look but at what funny what that because, was. If I may, uh, he Calvin Parker used the word interdimensional. He did. And yeah. It's an interview. So oh. he didn't make it. He didn't make it to the to the doc, yeah. but he did. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, Calvin Parker's experience. It's it's pretty profound. I mean. Uh, fascinating. I believe him. I mean, I interviewed him. Uh, he told me his whole story. Uh, was it government? Was it uh, UFO? Was it alien? We don't know. Uh, but something happened to him. And I think just recently in the newspapers, uh, I just saw that somebody else was a witness to um, that UFO uh, alongside that river and just came out uh, about it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. So there was Very another cool. there was another witness just Update. just came out <laughs> I want to say right. 6 months ago. And yeah. That's like 49 yeah. years ago. So that's all right. Yeah. You know it's it's okay. Wendy and I met Travis Walton and we're like oh, it's, cool. it's all real. It's all real. Like it's Oh just, yeah, it was amazing just, talking you, to him. You talk to the people that have had these experiences and I agree. You, I you're agree. just like oh you're, you know, it may be a thing of um, empathy, you know, mm -hmm. it may be a function of empathy. But either way, when you talk to these people that have had these powerful experiences that in a, in a term like, like Calvin Parker or the term of Tra Travis yeah. Walton, they've completely transformed their lives and have changed That's the over. outcome of where their lives mm -hmm. are going. It's, yeah. it's, it doesn't help to be like, you're just faking it, prick. Like it just, it, you know, well, that's not how we would be anyway. But, but yeah, when you talk to someone, when you, when you're in person with them and you hear the experience and you're, t you're yeah. able to ask them questions and whatnot, it's like, okay, this is a real person and that's what they saw. And, you know, even he says, I don't know what it was. It could have been a military thing. It could have been this, but that, but this is what I saw and this is what happened. And it's like, right. okay, right. all right, man, it's, I yeah. believe you. I totally believe you. <laughs> Very scary topic. To me. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we we, yeah, we sure. were lucky enough to to interview uh, Jesse Marcel Jr., who oh was oh, from uh, Roswell. His mm -hmm. yeah, his father brought oh home the crash res remnants. Wow. So we got to we got to interview him, and what a fascinating story! Cool. And another story, I totally believe him. Why, like you said, why would these people just lie about this their their lives and be you know ridiculed? Yeah for their whole life and this exactly. is like so long ago like you said it's like paranormal was looked at as like you know you, you couldn't even talk so about it know. back then so so yeah. why are you gonna like why are you gonna poke light at yourself right and, dude and comic books yeah. comic books weren't cool in 1970 alien yeah. abductions were get out of town yeah, exactly. like, you know so it really um that is that is um it's awesome, and I, I'd love to see the Jesse Marcel interview sometime. And we can't wait to see what you guys do next. Um, number one, I want everybody to go check out thehouseinbetween.com and watch the movie. It really is a well-done paranormal investigation. And if you guys enjoy watching paranormal documentaries, uh, if you've watched stuff on Sci-Fi Channel, uh, or a, a, the Travel Channel is basically all paranormal shows now. If you've watched on here, this makes an excellent addition to that. 
and uh, you might enjoy it even more because there's no commercials. Um, <laughs> so please check out that. And um, also they can find you guys at robotninja.com or is it robotninjamedia.com? There you go, robotninjamedia.com. And uh, yeah, uh, our Facebooks, Kendall Welton, Vera Welton on Facebook. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much where you are. Right. Fantastic. Can... So please go so, down so. there to find the movie. And then if you guys enjoy any of this stuff here and you want to hear some music and everything, go up here to check out <laughs> oh. patreon.com slash sunspot music. Oh, Mike. We have a fabulous prize today that they've generously I forgot. donated. We have a uh, we have a special disc uh, for somebody who's interested. Okay, so I tell you what, um, we're gonna do that for our our Patreons, and we're gonna have tomorrow. We are gonna have a um, trivia question for our Patreons because we always put the HD replay of our Paranormal Tuesdays. Um, in there on Wednesday morning. And so we're going to include a trivia question with that. And the first patron that gets it right uh, will get uh, their own copy of the house in between. And, and does that copy, <laughs> any chance that copy includes an autograph by you guys? Oh, oh sure. Wow, sure. Yes. Yeah, we can right. do that. Yeah. Si yeah. An autographed copy. Sweeten the deal. We'll put, <laughs> we'll put some extra little goodies in there oh, for Oh, that's awesome. Okay, yeah. that, that, that is so awesome. Nice. So Thank you. You guys, yeah. you guys that yeah. are watching this on Wednesday that you couldn't stay up to 9 o'clock or you're, uh, you're elsewhere, you're in a different time zone, um, make sure uh, you check that out. And make sure you answer the question correct because if you don't, mm -hmm. then you're going to get the merits on the next Paranormal ah. Tuesday. Um, <laughs> everybody else, thank you for joining us in the live feed. Um, we want to thank Ken, um, Ken Elvira for spending uh, extra time with us even more. Yes, thank uh, than, you so much. And so really yeah. fun. <laughs> good luck with the film. Um, thank you. Hopefully yeah. that uh, uh, lockdown is treating you well. And that South Carolina is treating you well. And we yeah. hope that you guys find something very paranormal very soon. To everybody else, we will see you on the other side.